Hello, in this video we will talk a little bit how to find the reference value for your trueness measurements. As explained previously, in order to find bias, we have to have our measurement and also a reference value. So in this part we will discuss a little bit how to get this reference value. What we need from this reference value is that it is indep independent from our measurements that we have done in our validation. Also, it's good if it has uh, some uncertainty and also that it is exactly in a matrix that you are analyzing your sample. So, there are three main possibilities to find this reference value and they are listed here. And we'll go through all of these. So, the first one is certified reference material. The idea is that you have an tomato that you have exact concentration of glyphosate for example and it has a certain uncertainty. However, as you can imagine, it's quite difficult to buy a certified reference, reference tomato. Therefore, the second option is a reference material. Reference material means that you have a tomato sample that doesn't have a certain uncertainty. Usually it means that it is a somewhat of a leftover from certain proficiency testing and it has a value that different laboratories have acquired but it, don't ha but it don't, doesn't have uncertainty. The problem with this kind of sample is that you don't really know exactly this value with uncertainty and therefore you can't, you can't be sure. And sometimes also it means that this value can actually be, de de be dependent of a method that you are using. So maybe if you are doing GCMS analysis you can have one result and if you are doing LCMS it can be a second one. So it's not really advised to use that kind of samples. So this leaves us to the third option, which is spiking and usually most used for our validation studies. So how to get this spiking? It means that we need reference material. And it should be different than our calibration. So this means that you have your reference materials that are different. So you use one for your calibration and the other one for your spiking studies. This is one option. You can also use different solutions as well, which can be also quite precise. And then uh, for your calibration curve, a different standard solution. So these are different options. When you do your spiking studies, the thing you should definitely keep in mind that it, it's never as precise as an analyte that is already inside your matrix. So you have to be careful with your trueness evaluation. And um, when you do your trueness spiking experiments, try to keep in mind that your native analytes are there differently. So sometimes it's good when you have spiked your, let's say into your matrix, you have spiked your analyte, that you will wait a little bit and don't analyze it right away. So this will give you a chance that it will be more infused into your sample. So these were some of the practical points in order to evaluate this reference value for your trueness studies.